the first time I started making money, I started spending more than I was making. And I think that's a very common theme. Uh, you, you see it more often than I do because a lot of people approach you about helping them with their personal finances. But, uh, you know, as I made more money, I spent more money. And you and I can laugh now, but remember uh, in 20... Uh, 21. Yeah. What was the peak? At, I think in the peak 2021, we went solo. We were making a lot more money than we had. And I came into you one day, we sat down and we had set a goal that you were going to help me with my personal financial management. And you were going to help show me how to better manage my bank accounts. Cause I had a lot of anxiety about money and you were like, bro, you shouldn't be worried. You're making so much. How are you spending it? And at the peak, we noticed I was spending on average almost $15,000 a month. As a single man with no kids, I was renting a room for five fifty dollars a month and splitting PG&E four ways, and I was spending fifteen dollars a month. Welcome back to the Pursuit of Property podcast. I am sitting here excited today because I'm about to get a financial lesson from my unpaid financial advisor, business partner, and best friend, Cade Barrett. Cade, how are you? (laughs) I'm doing good, dude. You do not give yourself enough credit. You are the perfect case study of what not to do, how to learn from your mistakes, and now be in a really good spot. So I think we're going to have a really good podcast today. Um... Dude, I love talking about this stuff. I think it is the single, one of the single most important topics for um, just people to be seasoned and educated with in general. I don't care if you're in real estate. I don't care if you're in education. I don't care if you're in tech. I don't care what industry you're in. Personal finance applies to each and every one of our lives, regardless of what industry we're in and regardless of what we got going on. So, um, Dude, I'm just freaking excited to talk about this stuff, man. Before you guys listen to this podcast, pause the podcast, click the share button and send this to all your friends. This is not a real estate podcast today. No. Today we are talking about making serious decisions and changing the future of your life by sharing what we know about financial literacy. And ideally, this is perfect for young adults. If you have not been in the real world, uh, prior to 2020 and you are now we are in one hell of a ride it feels like we are on what's the ride in santa cruz the big dipper yeah yeah it feels like we are on the big (laughs) dipper remember when you were like uh 10 and you go down that thing and it was the scariest moment of your life that's what we're in right now because we are on the climb with inflation we see a lot of impending uh financial doom in the news and i guess right now All we can do is keep your hands and feet inside of the vehicle and stay buckled in at all times. Dude. Let's start, because you already mentioned it, I am a perfect case study of the average American. I got out of uh, high school with uh, parents who, this is not normal, but parents who were financially uh, literate and who did try their best to teach me how to manage money. But I have the same problem that everybody has, uh, or not everybody, but I'd say 50 plus percent of the population. I love to spend. I am a spender. Uh, you may have noticed if you go back in our podcasts, I am currently drinking water out of a cup that I own. If you go back to probably the last 100 episodes, you will see a Starbucks cup <laughs> sitting next to me. And you can know that I like to spend money on frivolous things. That's just part of my personality and it's something I've had to change. And you have been a huge uh, support in that. I always joke that you and I are like a married couple. Between you and my actual wife, Kayla, I feel like I have two people who do not naturally have that spending and it's been a major blessing and we wanna share that with everybody right now. Um, But going back and saying kind of the case study, the first time I started making money, I started spending more than I was making. And I think that's a very common theme. 
you you see it more often than I do because a lot of people approach you about helping them with their personal finances. But, uh, you know, as I made more money, I spent more money. And you and I can laugh now, but remember uh, in 20... Uh, 21. Yeah. What was the peak? At, I think in the peak 2021, we went solo. We were making a lot more money than we had. And I came into you one day, we sat down and we had set a goal that you were going to help me with my personal financial management. And you were going to help show me how to better manage my bank accounts. Cause I had a lot of anxiety about money and you were like, bro, you shouldn't be worried. You're making so much. How are you spending it? And at the peak, we noticed I was spending on average almost $15,000 a month. As a single man with no kids, I was renting a room for five fifty dollars a month and splitting PG&E four ways, and I was spending fifteen dollars a month. So let's start there, and let's use me as a case study, and let's talk through some of the examples that, or some of the things that we did for me. Yeah. And then we can kind of play it more broadband for everybody. I think if, if we need to start at level zero for everybody. And I think this is something that every single person needs to be doing. If you are not starting at level zero of at least tracking what is coming in and what is going out, that is literally step one to getting all of this financial stuff situated for yourself. If you are not tracking the money that's coming in versus what's going out, you are, you're just, you're blind because, uh, and, and ignorant. I, I mean, I'll say it to you guys. If you aren't tracking your spending, you're being ignorant because if you have no idea what's coming in and what's going out, like you said, you could be spending an unworldly amount of money every month and you're asking yourself well dude i'm making all this money but you know and i'm spending all this money but where where is my money going and that's a common feeling that i know we've and again i'm not some that perfect dude who who's gotten this figured out over the course um who has been perfect throughout this whole time but it's a common feeling to be like dude where did my money go i just made x amount of money my bank account is showing that that I'm poor. Where did all my money go? St- level zero, even before step one, because I don't even want to call it step one, because before you can really start to gain control and, and be seasoned with your personal financials, literally step zero is to figure out and to track how much is coming in and how much is going out. And we use a tool that I want you to talk about that has been helpful that we got... <coughs> from one of our mentors Jason was one of the was the guy who told us you guys need to get this set up um I know I was uh I was freaking crazy I was using uh Google Sheets <laughs> for a really long time to track my spending which was uh I it's better than nothing I will say that but there is a free tool that we use now that we've used over the past couple of years that just starts us at this base level of tracking in and out yeah can, tell me because it's funny that you mentioned Google Sheets. Uh, three people uh, that you know that were in my wedding, the three smartest people when it comes to money that I know, all three used Google Sheets to track their personal finances when they were in high school and college. Where did you even like, when did you start tracking your money? Dude, I, I even want to try and think of who it was or what it was. I literally think I've just always been a little bit anal and OCD about about tracking that stuff. Like yeah. it, 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 if it's not, if everything's not dialed in, I don't know. It's just always been something that's eaten at me. So I, even dude, off the top of my head, even putting some thought into it, I can't think of a single person or thing I heard or thing I listened to that was this know, in high school. Junior it was in high, high school. Yeah, in high school. Um, even with, you know, kind of my first part-time job that I had during the summer, it was, dude, I, I'm tracking this in and out. I'm scanning all of my pay stubs and making sure. Really? Yes. <laughs> scanning all of my pay stubs, making sure I have them organized so that I have a, you know, I can go back and look really, okay, 
over this summer, how much did I really make? How much is showing in my account? Because there's no excuses if I can go back and I have the timeline and the proof of what I've made and for each pay period what I did. So it was back in high school, dude. And obviously, again, over the course of the years, it's continually honed in and gotten better and better. Um, But yeah, dude, I think a big turning point was using personal capital which is now empower empower which is a free online tool that we both use we've preached and shown a ton of other people how to use um that has really been a game changer for tracking the ins and outs of your spending yes if you look up uh personal capital or empower or the combination of those two Uh, it will get you to the website. It's a free website. This is a financial institution. It is secured. Uh, Obviously, anytime you use a website that tracks your money, it has to go through your bank. Your bank has security processes. So Mm -hmm. please don't let that fear of somebody breaking into your bank account that has $4 be scared uh, or stop you from from starting this. We have accounts linked up. Uh, Jason has accounts linked up. We know people with millions uh that have accounts linked up to this website the benefit for me i'm a very visual person i'm also a very high anxiety person when it comes to this money um you can probably talk more openly but your you and i approach money very differently and i get very very sheepish when it comes time to look at the real numbers and you get very very excited um but there's no excuse uh empower allows you to link all of your bank accounts so i have banks uh uh, bank accounts 16 linked from four different uh u.s banks uh i also have stock accounts um Mm -hmm. the the little i dabble in stock i think it's like 800 bucks i've got my retirement accounts uh my wife's retirement accounts i have all of our real estate tied in there and i even have my car uh on that Mm -hmm. on that website the value for me is it tracks not only my spending and allows me to manage spending and income and, and track kind of month by month, but it also provides a chart on the homepage that shows my net worth, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm doing this because I'd like to create wealth, not income. And so, you know, when I can see these big bumps in, in wealth growth because uh, property values are going up or because I am saving correctly, uh, it's an encouraging moment for me and it makes it easier for me to review my financials when I see the wealth ticker going up. And uh, sometimes you you log in and your wealth has gone down and it's scary, but it's it's what needs to be done. And I don't have to go through and manually type in every transaction. If I had to do that, I wouldn't be doing what I do today. Um, nowadays, it, it all reads in automatically and it allows not only myself and Kayla to be on the same page, but it allows somebody like you or, uh, you know, any kind of mentors or parents to like, hey, here's a snapshot of where I'm at and you can get better advice that way. Yeah, I think you mentioned the other the other biggest strength about using um, personal capital slash empower is the organization that comes with it, right? Being able to see everything in one place across any and all accounts that you have in addition to being able to see, hey, um, and they actually call it the cash flow button or function in there where it literally shows you in, it, it breaks down a chart for you. You go to the cash flow section, it shows you exactly what came in and it shows you exactly what came out. It allows you to categorize your expenses between different categories that are already pre made for you, um, like restaurants, groceries, mortgage, and you can also create your own categories as well. So it allows you to see, um, and I'm kind of getting into step two here. So before, yeah, well, I'm going to rewind a little bit. Yeah. Well, I'm curious. Step one or step zero is, is get set up on personal capital. What is step yeah. one? Step one is figuring out what it, it it's taking the next line to and I and I like to use these as step one A and step one B because and it and we'll use kind of this case study and I'm gonna start with one A. Now that you have this all in here, you can see what's coming in and what's going out. Before categorizing anything, you need to see, okay, are you spending more than you're making? Yes. Most people are. Yeah, I was. <laughs> if so, and I attest this technique, I think we actually learned it way back when um, a KW team meeting, a KW something. Yeah, I think it was a KW annual meeting. 
annual meeting. So now that you've got this set up, step one is looking at your expense category and they call it what? The green pen, yellow pen, and red pen. Yeah, I, I learned it in scouts, wants, needs, and waste. And waste, green being, okay, now that we've got, now that you've got it all loaded in, you can now see all of the money that's going out. You need to go line item by line item. Every single transaction of an expense that you've had gone out, and you're gonna use one of those three colored markers. Green for stuff that is absolute necessities, right? Um, you what know, are those? If uh, groceries, and I'm not including going out to eat in that. Groceries to act food that is a necessity for you, you know, to live. Yeah. Right. Necessities also being if you have rent or a mortgage, any sort of housing expense that is fixed to keep a roof over your head and stuff like that. If so, you own a house, in that that mortgage also include your maintenance on your home absolutely you can't let your assets go down and utilities right because that's also an integral part of your housing and your shelter right and um if there's any sort of medical stuff right and, and you guys can be you guys need to be honest with yourselves i can't force you guys to to be honest this exercise here you need to be as brutally honest with yourself as possible what are my absolute needs right what's the absolute bare minimum that i need to spend to you know keep this basic level of survival right you then move on and go through with the yellow pen the yellow pen is the stuff that's kind of on the middle uh on the edge of the teeter-totter right yeah. it's um car I, payments come to mind because yeah. you you do need a car if your job is far away but do you need that car, right? Do you need a Camaro SS to get from, you know, Palm and Bullard to Cedar and Herndon? Dude, I love how you how you brought up this example because even this is as recent as was it earlier this year? Yeah. Earlier this year, yeah, it was where I went through and I had this yellow marker for this new truck that I bought. Uh, <laughs> Badass truck. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was dope. But I'm going through and I'm like, dude, this is a time where. I really need to hone in on my on my spending. I really need to hone in because the market we're in, I need to double down on the activities, figure out a way to make more money and spend less money. I have my my first car, my first truck, that 2002 Toyota Tundra that's still sitting in the driveway. And I have this brand new 2022 Chevy Silverado that I just bought with, you know, that was 550 bucks a month. And I'm like, dude, custom this... license plate, everything. Shoot, dude. I know it was pretty dope. Um, but I'm like, dude, right now, this is not, it, it was a yellow marker, dude. And I'm like, I need to be honest with myself is right now, can I go back to a car that's fully paid off, double down on the income generating activities, push through and weather through this season. And dude, when the time's right, I'll go out and get something badass that I really love. But right now, that truck, that brand new truck was a yellow pen and I got rid of it dude okay so i love how you brought up that example and those are some of the yellow pen stuff right for me a yellow yeah. pen item uh let me think it's hard because i actually didn't have a lot of yellows i had a lot of greens and reds <laughs> um a yellow item this is this is really something that might be uh, it should be a red i had marked coffee I keep bringing up coffee and it's funny because that was my big vice, right? Some people like to travel. Some people like to play golf. Some people like, I, for some reason or another, really liked the routine of getting a Starbucks every morning. That ended up being $7,000 last year. That is an absurd amount of money to spend on a on an item that can be much, much, much cheaper. And here's why, and I don't, I, I'm on board with this being a yellow marker item because and again, I may be in the unpopular um, opinion of this, right? Because you'll see, I, I've seen plenty of them, right? Like the gurus on social media who are like, dude, do not go and pay for a $3 coffee every single day. Stephen make it at, Graham. Make it at home. I think of Kevin O'Leary too, right? Yeah, like make it at home. You're absolutely stupid if you're going and paying for a coffee. I'm like, dude, there's a difference between if going and getting that coffee and I'll, and I'll say that one coffee. <laughs> yeah, I was getting two or three. <laughs> you were getting two or three a day, which is a little different. But I, I'm talking about if getting that one coffee 
to start your morning every day, if that is something that really you thoroughly and enjoy, like, dude, keep that as a yellow item, right? It's red if you're going and doing two, three, four coffees a day. But if getting that one coffee to start your day, dude, if that is an integral part of your day and it's something that you really thoroughly enjoy, it's not a green because it's not integral to your basic needs, right? Right. But have it be a yellow, dude. If going and getting that coffee every day is an important part of your day, go and do it. Here's another great example. (laughs) I had two gym memberships. I had GB3, $30 a month. That was like the staple gym. And then I had a $140 a month uh, hit class gym Mm -hmm. that I go to once a week. It was great. I liked it. When you look and you're going through in yellow and reds, your fitness is not a waste, but two gym memberships, one can be green. Yeah. They both should probably be yellow because you can always work out at home if you're being Mm -hmm. really honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. But the second gym membership is not even a yellow. Absolutely. And so now let's get to the red marker. I want you to tell me when you were going through, because you said the majority of yours were some greens and then a whole lot of reds. What does the red marker mean? What were some of your red marker stuff? Big red restaurants (laughs) were four to $5,000 a month. Uh, Tech, I I was constantly buying new tech, uh, new iPad here, you know, new phone there, MacBook Pro there. Uh, Talking about just upgrading items that didn't need to be upgraded, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, especially if you're, in the business world, having the newest phone, the newest MacBook, the newest iPad, there's always somebody that says you have to have this because X, Y, or Z, it's very easy to be sold on it. And for me, I was like very on board with that. I was like, I like tech. I've always been in tech. Boom. A lot of, a lot of red items were restaurants and tech. Um, that that's, I would say 80% of of my spending. Yeah. And we're, we're, you talked about these buckets of needs versus wants, right? The red marker is, all of those wants that you, and again, this is this exercise needs to be a brutally honest conversation with yourself because if you don't treat it honestly, you're not going to make any progress. It, it does nothing for you if you're not going to be honest with yourself, which may make sense. It may make sense to have somebody, you know, kind of go through it with you. A parent, somebody you, a spouse, you trust, exactly. A friend, somebody that you know is better at money management than you don't have. For example, I have friends that are way worse with money than me. That would be like, dude, you're crushing it. Don't have that guy go look at your finances because they're just going to be like, bro, you could you spend up. more. Yeah. Don't do that. So um, that that's step one, right? We've now step zero. We know what's coming in. We know what's coming out. Step one is figuring out what can be changed with the stuff that's going out. Yeah, right. We, I did instead of pens, I just added li- tags to yeah. my personal capital. It yeah. said need, want, waste. And I just tagged every transaction. Yeah. And I think now that we're kind of graduating and moving on to step two is figuring out now, not figuring out because we figured that out in step one, but now it's making some impactful incremental changes. And I get it. I'm not preaching to you guys to make this change overnight because it's hard, right? Going from spending that amount of money, the lifestyle, you know, that you're living, being pumped with all of these, you know, dopamine receptors from all of the wants that we like, right? That newest tech item going out and, you know, spending a bunch of money. your friends at dinner. Exactly, dude. Like it, it, this, it's not, we always use this analogy for a lot of stuff, but it's a great analogy. It's not a light switch, right? nor should you expect yourself to have it be a light switch, but it needs to be a dimmer and it need, you need to be moving that dimmer quick, right? Because while it doesn't, that switch doesn't happen overnight, it is really, really important, not only for yourself, but if you're supporting a family, a spouse, there are some impactful changes that need to be made, especially if there's a whole lot of red items and you're finding yourself in your bank account in trouble at the end of every month. And I think also you can move faster than you think. The same way a coach pushes you to work out harder. Uh, if you don't put that expectation, that that stretch goal on yourself each month incrementally, um, it's very easy to go, well, I'm, I'm, I saved $100 this month. And if you're spending 15 grand, which I was an exception, not a lot of people are spending that much. You have to keep in mind, I was I was making 20 grand a month, right? So it's not like I didn't have the money. 
but I was looking at it and going, holy, like I just did this much money this year and I have none of it in savings. Where did it go? And that's exactly it, right? You brought up the whole scenario of keeping up with the Joneses, right? If you're making a shit ton of money, you're spending a shit ton of money. You may be projecting this lifestyle, right? You may have all the newest shit and everything, but we just talked about this on our silent killer podcast a couple episodes ago with inflation, right? Years and years and years of those keeping up with the Joneses habits, um, especially when time comes around where you're no longer able to work and make that income that's enabling you to spend all this money, you're going to be left with nothing, no savings, nothing to live on, right? You've been keeping up with the Joneses the whole time. And now you're going to be absolutely left in the freaking dust because you're in serious trouble Yep. now. So um, what happens next? So you've tracked your wants, needs and, and uh, waste. Where do you like, this is a little bit more, it has to be tailored per person, but where do you start looking for where to cut? Yeah. And it's, it's like you said, it's tailored to each person. And this is where the categorizing comes in, right? We've now set up and we can see what's coming in and out. We now have a baseline understanding of our needs, wants, and kind of that middle of the road yellow marker, right? It's now categorizing that spending, right? And personal capital, again, does a fantastic job of allowing you to categorize really easy and see it on a whim. So when you're able to now see the breakdown of where your money's going, not only that 15 grand is going out the door every single month, but how is that 15 divvied up when you are now able to categorize, okay, you know, X amount. I don't remember what you said. The amount was for was restaurants, like 5,000, 5,000 a month. That's going out to eat. That's not groceries. That's not that's going out to eat at restaurants, drinks, all that sort of a stuff, right? You can categorize your coffee, right? $7,000 for the year, right? And categorize how much is going to coffee every month. When you are now able to categorize, you can now see, okay, where can I make the most meaningful cuts? Do I need to go and spend $5,000 every month going out to eat and having fun? <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't need to spend $5,000 a month. Now, am I saying to go from 5,000 to zero? No, because I know, dude, we, uh, unless you're in some serious trouble and you abs and you do need to cut that out because there is, you know, a livelihood problem that's going to happen if you don't, then that's a little bit of a different story. But I'm not saying to go from 5,000 to zero, but I am saying make a meaningful, significant cut to where you can still go out and have these times and, and these meaningful times and, and meals with friends or your spouse, because that time is also important, right? Uh, we've preached and you've talked about, um, you know, date nights with your spouse, like carving out these times is really important, not only for your mental health, but for relationships, for friendships, but it does not it. And again, if you're not honest with yourself here, I, I can't make you be honest with yourself. You need to make that shift on your own, but you do not need to be spending $5,000 a month. So when you're able to categorize, and again, it's having, you know, that trusted person there who, if you're not being completely honest with yourself, they may be able to help you spouse, friend, mentor, figuring out what those biggest chunks are in that pie chart of your spending and figuring out where you can make the most meaningful, significant cuts. Yeah. There was, there's a theory about starting with the big items first and then working to the smaller items. Some people want to start like, oh, I'll just cut out this little thing and then this little thing and then this little thing and I'll slowly work to get to the big items. We started opposite. We cut out, hey, do you have the tech you need to do your job? Yes, done. All right. We just saved like $6,000 <laughs> a month in tech stupid purchases. Uh, we talked about, hey, how are you spending even $5,000 in Fresno on restaurants? <laughs> like that was a serious question we had to ask. I know. And I was like, well, I, you know, when I go out to eat, I'm, I'm buying everybody dinner or... You know, I, I went to dinner with my family. There was 20 of us. I, I paid for dinner. That's great. You can do that, but you can't do that every time you go out, man. Yeah. And again, I'm not, because doing that, it, it feels good. Like to be a giver like that, again, it, it feels really good to be able to be in a position to be able to do that and, and have those experiences with your family and friends and to be able to give like that, it feels good. But when you have an income problem, and you're spending that amount of money, like you said, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be every single time. Right. Um, 
we chiseled it down. I think like it started with like, hey, let's set your monthly goal to be $5,000 of spending a month. And I just remember still being like, wow, how am I going to do that? <laughs> and looking like that's insane now. But that right there took me from 15 to five. And that's a big jump, but that was because I had a lot of bigger ticket purchases that were making that 15 number happen. It wasn't like my housing cost a ton and this cost a ton. Our greens were very small. Yeah. And over like a six to seven month period, uh, and I know this to be true because I look back, I got my spending down to $1,600 a month. And my lifestyle was pretty much the same. Not much changed. Isn't that crazy? Like every... <laughs> I and wasn't again, going to Vegas every freaking month. Yeah. I wasn't, uh, pay, you know, paying for all my friends' food. I wasn't buying a new laptop every three months. Like it, it wasn't a lot of craziness. If you're not in that position and you're maybe you're only spending three grand and you just need to get down to twenty five hundred, it may not be that dramatic. And I can say that like getting that change was great because you get that dopamine release when you see your bank accounts going up and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm retaining all this hard work. Uh, you know, you don't, we're not on this hamster wheel just to spin forever. We want to get off the hamster wheel when we're 60 and retire. So if you want to do that, you have to be aggressive and you have to live differently now so that you can live differently later. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we've talked about all of the core things that need to happen in order to at least get a handle, like rein in, all of the sheep, all of the expenses that are going out, we've now built the pin around everything. We've got the grasp around the financials. Now, one of the worst mistakes you can make that can topple that fence you just built and let everything run rampant again is if you don't keep a temperature check on that stuff. What right? does that look like? And what that means is, okay, hey, you've gone through this hard work of being really honest with yourself. You've now got this grasp and in an idea of your personal financials, your spending habits and the money that's coming in. But now if you just completely forget about it, what's going to happen and it will happen. I don't care what, if you think it's not because it will and time will tell, try it. If you don't believe me, you know, do this one time and then don't look at it again and then see how you are in six months. Cause it's going to be exactly where you were before you got a grasp on this is if you just forget about it, you're gonna go back to the exact same position you were in, if not worse. So the most important thing you need to do here, and it's a habit builder, right? Is keep that temperature check on your financials. And what does that mean? Be educated and be intentional about spending time in personal capital, spending time in your bank accounts, just to keep that temperature check, make sure, hey, the amount that I set, you know, the new amount that I've set my budget to be every month, am I holding myself to that? Am I going beyond crazy? Do I need to rein in some of these red markers again, right? It's being intentional with keeping up on the activity in your accounts. What are the actionable steps? And this is where, again, it comes down personally. We, I know we still do things a little bit different. Again, I'm, I'm a little bit anal, dude. So I spend at least 15 minutes every single day in personal capital, uh, slash empower updating any expenses or income that has come in or gone out. So it's every single day. I know my personal capital is up to date and categorized and everything's dialed in. Right. So spending at least, and again, I'm spending at least 15 minutes every day in personal capital slash empower updating my transactions and just, again, it's visual. We are visual as human beings, right? And it stuff makes more sense when we can actually see what's going on. Now, do you need to be doing it 15 minutes every every day like I am? No. But I would say at least the bare minimum needs to be once a week. Yeah. Once a week. There's no excuse to ha have it be anything longer than that. It needs to be at least once a week temperature check, spending some intentional time with your financials. Let's treat this like a business. If you're not a business owner, what that means is you need to have daily checks, weekly checks, and then important, like some of the most important are monthly checks to Absolutely. see, did we hit our quota? Did we not? Mm -hmm. uh, Kayla and I, we spent about an hour uh, towards the end of each month reviewing who did well, who didn't do well, because we're team players together. One of us could have a month where we saved a lot and the other may have spent a lot um, with the race. I, you know, I had to buy a wetsuit. I had to do these things. All of a sudden, you know, that's 250 there, 250 there. Uh, 
okay, well, how are we going to fix that, right? So adjusting, you know, what what we can do to make up for those. It's very easy to say, well, yeah, I spent a little more this month. You know, it is what it is. I'll make up for it in others. But every time that you have a month where you save, you're like, oh, cool. I can spend a little extra this month. It never, it's always a uh, 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 double standard. When I go over, I don't make a big deal. When I go under, I celebrate that I went under. So I spend over. It's just, that seems to be how I handle it. And then on an annual level, it's where do I want to end up in a year from now? Right? Yeah. We set goals, you know, uh, and this is, again, uh, we don't have a ton of time to get into every detail, but you know, there's different theories. Kayla and I set the goal. We want to have six months reserves of our current lifestyle in a bank account that if one of us were to get injured, if we were to lose a job, we have runway. That's the term you use runway to get solutions, right? You don't want to be in a spot where if you lose a job, you are going to get kicked out of your house. And if you're a business owner, you should have a year of salaries and expenses because you never know when a market change happens and you want to operate your business at the highest level for as long as you can. So annual and monthly meetings um, to review. And again, back to being brutally honest. When you set the goal, you're very honest. When you're looking at it in retrospect, how did I do? You have to even be more honest. Like, hey, I did well in these spots. Great job. Where, spot, where are the spots I went over? You know, mark them out. Tailor a plan specifically on how to fix that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think all of these, you know, this kind of baseline we've set, I think this is, you know, novice to intermediate, you know, personal financial behaviors, activities, um, stuff like that. And I think if you guys are starting at level zero and can get to this point, that is one of the most impactful shifts and changes you can make. And I think now, and you mentioned something that I think is now, once you've got that grasp, you can't go and start setting savings goals and reserves goals for emergencies unless all of this is already taken care of. Talk about bank account structures. I had somebody the other day who only has one bank account for everything. Yeah. Why is that bad? And what are you supposed to do? Yeah. I, and again, I'm a little bit over the top, but I think it, there should be at least, you know, it, I'll, I'll tell you about how mine's structured. And then I also want you to talk about how, and again, as you know, married, how yeah. you guys have set up your yeah. structure. So here's traditionally, here's what people have. Um, when you open up a bank account, obviously you have your one checking account. And then most people have at least one savings account with Little to no money, right? I mean, I we hear the updated stat every year, but it's like 65 or it may even be 75, but over half of Americans don't have $400 saved in case an emergency hits. So I know most people's savings accounts, there, there's no money in there, dude. Everything's what you're, what's coming in to your checking is what's going out and nothing's getting saved, right? So here's how I have set up my, my accounts and I've set up both my business as a business owner, I've set up my business accounts in a similar way and also my personal accounts, but I'll talk about my personal accounts. Having that checking account, right? Having that savings account that I designate, I literally in my online portal, I edit the name of the account to say owner's reserves. And what that means is the money in here is not touched. That is figuring out the amount that you now the baseline amount that you're spending every month, you said you got it down to 1500 at one point, right? Yeah. But so. having between six and 12 months of those reserves to where if you can no longer work and bring income in, you can use the money in those reserves in an emergency to keep your same level of living. So let's just use around thousand dollars, right? Obviously let's do, let's do $3,000, $3,000. If you're spending $3,000 every month, that's your consistent baseline level. Having between six and 12 months of that $3,000. Again, I always like to be a proponent of being extra conservative. I like at least having that one year. So 12 times three, 36, right? Having $36,000, the goal of getting $36,000 into that reserves account, that is then no longer touched unless in case of emergency, right? Right. And what I also have is I have three additional savings accounts that are set up in the online portal. And traditionally with your bank, you can go in and say, hey, can I just open an additional linked savings account? Uh, most of them should be able to let you do that with no ad additional charge. 
So I then have an investment, a, a, a savings account that I go in and I edit the name to be an investment account. And what I have in there is, hey, money that's going in there, once it reaches a certain point, I'm then taking that and putting it into you know, either income producing assets, having those you know, contribute towards properties, or maybe I'm taking a chunk of that and then putting it into stocks or a retirement account. But there needs to be a designated account there for investments. Because like you were talking about, if we run into, if we're constantly just spending what we're making and nothing's getting not only saved because, you know, it's great to have a reserves account, but if all of our saving for retirement and livelihood is staying in a bank account, that's the absolute worst thing you can do. You're still going to be screwed in retirement because saving's not enough now, guys. We, yeah. We've we talked, talked about, about this. That. Yeah. Saving is not enough. So having a designated investment account for money to go into other assets, stocks, real estate, whatever it is. Um, and then these other two I have, I have a vacation savings account where uh, part of my money that's coming in every month goes, I, you know, X amount goes into that vacation fund or account to where, hey, if, you know, I want to save for a trip or I want to go to X place, right? I now am only using the designated money that's been saved and set specifically for vacations or reward. travel in there. Exactly. It's a reward, right? Um, and then the other one I have is just, you know, I, I like to use it. It's like my utility savings account, right? Like if I want to save a, for a personal expense of... <sighs> A wedding ring. Yeah, dude. Hey, <laughs> there it is. Come on now. <laughs> Gotta um, give you a hard time. Exactly, bro. No, that. but that's it. That's, that's a perfect what I example. Use mine for. A, a wedding ring. Or if you have, you know, some hob hobbies. Like, hey, I know I want to do... You know, let's just use the Ironman Iron for Man example. Ironman Texas. I want to I want to do Ironman Texas next April. I don't have a bike and I want to save for my own bike so I don't want to have to borrow one. I use that as a utility account, right? For stuff I want to save for that you know, but are still a little bit bigger purchases, right? Yeah. So again, this is kind of the advanced next stage of setting up your accounts. But I think having that organization there, it, it's an advanced technique for your personal financials, but it's also taking that next step after getting these under control. Let's talk about you and marriage and having some of those accounts set up that way, because obviously with marriage, people do finances different ways. Yep. Um, but I'm curious to hear how you guys have it set up because I think you guys have got it dialed in. Uh, it's a lot more dialed in. Thank God for Kayla. <laughs> Look, uh, there's not a perfect way uh, to be married. Yeah. Uh, every marriage is different. I am blessed that my wife is not a spender. I hear a lot of people complain that one person's a spender and one is not. Same is true in mine. I happen to be the spender. Good news is I'm very cognizant of it. Uh, I have yeah. no problem making money. That seems to be a trend but I do have a problem saving money. So uh, looking at it, we have an operating account just like we would have, uh, you know, just like we would have for a business. Um, we have savings, traditional, six months, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. We have a charity account. I grew up in the Catholic faith. 10% tithing was an expectation. Unfortunately, I've fallen short of that the last four years. Um, that is a huge landmark for us to try to get uh, past. We have a travel account. We have a allowance account, and this is two. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, a couple other bank accounts that we use, kind of like uh, kind of intermittently for a couple different projects. Yeah. So, like those utility kind of flex accounts. Yeah, yeah, they're not they're not always exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, the one I get the most questions about is the allowance account. A lot of guys see, well, you're doing like a, a shit ton of deals. You've been doing well for a few years. Like, why do you have an allowance? For me, the benefit was it gave me money that Kayla and I both agreed. Like, I can spend it on whatever I want. Kayla has her own money. She can spend it on whatever she wants. If I want to spend it on Starbucks, I can. But for me, it's $350. And that number came from looking at all the green items that have to get paid. Uh, then looking at the yellow items that our family really wants, uh, include like in that would be, I guess, uh, you know, that would be like travel or uh, furniture, things like that. And then at the very bottom, we, you have a leftover number, right? You're, this is a simple math equation. Money in minus money spent that needs to be spent. Money spent that we really want to spend. 
And then lastly, there's a balance left over. And for me, I get $350. And at first, you have to think, a couple months ago, I was still spending two grand on just fun, fun money, right? Because after I got married, I stopped paying attention as much because the, the dual income trap is a real thing. You know, I just got an increase in income and our savings or our spending actually got cheaper because we started living together. Uh, Kayla likes to cook, so I stopped eating out as much. There were some inherent savings, but it came down to $350. And I've had that for a few months. And frankly, I've been able to hit it every month. Like there's months like last month where I had to buy a wetsuit on the 30th for $250. So I went over, but guess what? I had to take that from my next month's allowance. So this month I started with only like a hundred dollars and I'm at the race and I want to buy a freaking Iron Man hat. And I'm like, the Iron Man hat is like 50 bucks. <laughs> and it's the, it's the 10th of September. I got to make it to the end of the month off 50 bucks. No way. Yeah. I didn't buy it. Right. That Iron Man hat's going to be there in a year. I don't have to buy it at the event. Yeah. You know, uh, Hey, I really want to go and buy the race photos for the race. Guess what? The race photos are going to be there literally forever. Yeah. The 60 bucks to buy those photos can be on a month, maybe where I actually saved. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, maybe another Iron Man race. It was like 500 bucks just to sign up for the race. Well, guess yeah. what? That's more than one month savings. So over the next few months, if I want to do another Iron Man or a marathon, you know, you got to kind of live within your means more. And I'm a very competitive person. It helps having, uh, somebody else who I can see their bank account and I see them not spending their money every month. And I'm like, Oh, Kayla, you're too good at this. You're too good at this. I'm going to beat you this month yet to beat her. But at the same time, it's like a fun game and yeah. our lifestyle is still great. Yeah. We're definitely not living in poverty and our, we're changing the trajectory of a cruise ship, right? It doesn't change just on a dime, right? This isn't a, a speedboat. We're talking about over the course of 12 months, we've redirected our financial trajectory, mm -hmm. right? Or trajectory. Yeah. But I think everybody needs to hear this. We got to wrap up this podcast. Yeah. Uh, I know that everybody is going to have a lot of questions. Yeah. And that's exactly, that's a perfect way to cap this off. We, again, we've always been open, honest, you know, nothing to hide or share. We always want to be proponents of helping people, you know, do what we've learned. We want, we want to pass on all of this stuff. So if you guys need that, you know, other person, if you don't, you know, have anybody to kind of be that eye over your shoulder, come in, hit us up, sit down and let's go through it. Right. We are here to help in any way we can. Um, we've already sat down with people. We're sit. I think you're sitting down with a buddy next week of ours yep. um, to go through literally this exact same thing. So um, you guys, please, like Scott said at the beginning of this episode, share this with friends, share it with family. Hopefully there was a lot of impactful knowledge and actionable things that you guys can take to get a grasp on your personal financials. Um, and like I said, we are always here to help and, you know, give guidance in any way we can. We're in no way perfect, but I think we've got a pretty good grasp on this thing, um, you know, compared to kind of that normal level uh, across the board. So. Absolutely. Put in the hard work now. It will pay off tenfold. Absolutely. All right, guys, we will see you next week. Have a great day. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs>